Hey everyone, welcome to Do You Even Lift Bro? A podcast about home gyms, DIY, lifting, and life. This podcast is a production of Garage Gym Experiment. For those who prefer visuals, this podcast is also available on the Garage Gym Radio channel. I'm Kyle, and with me today is Mr. Nice Like Mike. That's What's me. up, Mike? What's up, Kyle? It's good to see you, buddy. I'm glad to see your face, man. Um, it's been a while. You've been off social media for a while. What have you been up to? I was, I was. I'm kind of trying to make my way back. Um, you know, we, we, we moved, we relocated. Uh, we, we left Washington and we're currently in uh, the Phoenix Valley of Arizona. And, you know, I think when we started that process of moving, it was, it was a long, you know, two or three years of exploring where we might move and everything. But when we finally kind of put, put our foot on the gas uh, with the housing market doing what it was doing, even in the Seattle area, we just thought we got to move quick. Yeah. And the lift, quite literally, the lift of packing and moving and all of the logistics involved was just all consuming. And it, it drained me. And, as, and you know, as you know, the content creation, you kind of want to bring your A game. You want to have some energy. You require right. some creative ju- juices. And it just, I didn't have the oomph. It took a lot of effort just to post the little bit that I did. But we're here now. We're settled. The move is, is complete. We're not completely un- unpacked. I've got the gym pretty well set up, but it was just easier to just cu- kind of go dark, you know, yeah. it, it, just to let it go and, and hope to pick it back up when when we got here. And things have been going good, you know, posted a couple of reels and, you know, kind of getting um, reconnected with the community and kind of feels like I never left. So it's good to be back. Good to see you. Good to be on a podcast again. Well, you missed out on so many things while uh, you're gone, man. We have uh, so much to catch up on. I want to know all the things. I, I mean, right. you've teased all of these things and I don't know how much more you can share, but I'm so curious about what's been going on in your life and what catch me up. Well, before we talk about me, and oh, okay. don't worry, I'll leave us plenty of time to talk about all my great achievements. Um, <laughs> I really just want to dig into, like, you moved. Mm. You didn't just move down the street. You didn't move to the next city over. You moved states. I've done yeah. that before, but I've never yeah. moved a gym across multiple states. Like, yeah. how was that process? And, like, what did you want to, what did you keep? What did you get rid of? What, you know, it's just, it's so complex. It, it is. It's it's more complex than I thought it was going to be. I, on on the first podcast that we did together, the do you, the first the, the Wild and Crazy Kids episode, I think yeah. I talked about, you know, um, ambitiously. I'm not getting rid of anything. I'm going to yeah. keep everything. And when the moving pod showed up and we started loading it, you know, which wasn't just dedicated to the gym. It was household stuff as well. I quickly realized just how much space this stuff takes up. Mostly the things that didn't break down so well, like my, it was specifically like my DIY dumbbell rack and my DIY plate storage, they were just massive. And then I started reading the fine print on the pods terms of agreement. And it said Mm -hmm. like maximum load is 5,000 pounds. And I thought, wow, I've I've got that in gym equipment alone. (laughs) Uh, That's not counting couches and and other things. Um, so I, I like shared a little bit in my stories and, and about what the process was and answered a bunch of people's questions. And, uh, Multiple people reached out in the DMs and were like, dude, sell. Sell your stuff your, and rebuild when you get there. Mm-hmm. And while I didn't completely take that that notion and, and just sell everything, it did kind of encourage me to to offload the biggest weight stuff, or the, the, the heaviest things, which was my collection of, of York milled plates and mm. then my rep 5 to 100 dumbbells. And I made this decision probably with 10 to 12 days before that pod was getting picked up. Man. So it was either go or either had to be sold or is coming with us. And I was very pessimistic that I'd either be able to sell them for what I got them for, or maybe mm-hmm. even turn a little bit of a profit. Yeah. But you know what really put it over is I included the DIY storage. I thought oh, I'll nice. price these at what I want to make back for the, the plates and the dumbbells. And I'll say, hey, if you'd like the DIY storage that they're pictured on, you can have that complimentary. Nice. They went in like hours. I mean, wow. I had guys come in showing up in their trucks and they were so excited to, and it was, it was hard. I thought, oh, these are some, I really love these pieces. I'm, yeah. I'm so sad to see these go, right. but they were so happy. 
Um, and, and it made me happy to know that, okay, these are going to a good home. This guy's not just going to go flip them. He's seems really excited to have the storage and he feels like he's getting a good deal. And I feel like I'm getting a good deal. So sold that stuff, but everything else, Mars bar, all my barbells, the, the RM3, Mm -hmm. all of that came with me, broke down pretty easily. Um, I think the toughest part is securing it, you know, making sure that over that you know, cause it's driving across the country and it's shaking the whole time. Yeah. If you've got any metal on metal, you're going to open up that pod and find your stuff just rubbed to, right. to bare steel. So yeah. it was just the, the careful packaging of some really heavy and, um, clumsy things was, uh, very difficult. My wife was very, uh, impressed. She says, you've got a Tetris mind. I cannot believe you've got all that nice. stuff in there. So yeah. yeah, that's, that's what that looked like. It's kind of fun, isn't it? Like, I know it's a lot of work, but yeah. like packing, I packed a pod before when we moved mm-hmm. from California to Indiana and like, I was out there every day and I was like, oh, there's a little nook and I could get something in there and there's a small little space here. So you pack yeah. it as full as you can possibly pack it. And then you're like, I did that. That's done. I'm an amazing packer. I don't know. It felt really <laughs> yeah. good when I Add did that it. to the resume, right? Put that on my right. LinkedIn. Yeah. Achievements. Yeah, I, <clears throat> at the time, I was posting pictures of it on Instagram. I was so yeah. proud. Like, hell yeah, bro. I packed this tiny little box full of, like, everything. Yeah. Everything I could, yeah. It is fun. It is fun. It's, I think, you know, for anybody who might be considering to move, that was kind of the plus to a pod. They're not cheap. But the 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 nice piece of that is it just, it can, it'll sit in your driveway for as long as you need it, which gives you the time to pack it appropriately versus typically when you rent like a U-Haul, you're on a time crunch, right? Like you've got Mm -hmm. seven days from, that includes packing, driving, unloading, and getting it back to your local U-Haul dealer. So that gave us the time and the ability to kind of pack it appropriately. But then yeah, getting here, and then we landed in here in Arizona in um, the beginning of November, which was Black Friday sales. So Mm -hmm. I was able to capitalize and you know, Bro, got, bought a bunch timing. of new stuff and nice. yeah, and, and did really, really well uh, from a from an investment perspective. And that part was fun. The rebuilding process has been a lot of fun. So what all have you bought and built since you landed and you started rebuilding your gym? A lot. Um, yeah. Let's see. So I sold all those York milled plates, which I've talked about on podcasts before. We're just a Bad, bad decision when I purchased them. Uh, and I was torn. I was either going to go Avanco OMs on the plates um, or Strength Co. And I mm-hmm. got to say, like I looking at the Strength Co. plates and never having held them and only seeing them through websites and other people's posts, I wasn't a huge fan of the aesthetic. Mm-hmm. But so many people spoke incredibly highly of them. Mm-hmm. Um, Basement Brandon and plenty of other people were just telling me, like, go Strength Co., go Strength Co. So I trusted them. Straight Co. had uh, a rare sale and I loaded up and in hand, they're like, they're, they're really, really good. I think, um, Kanye West has this funny line that I think applies. He's like, I know, I know I look better in real life. Like that's mm-hmm. how I feel with the Strength Co. plates, like <laughs> in real funny. life yeah. when they're in your hands, uh, yeah. they're, they're really, really nice. So I got those and then I replaced all of my fully knurled dumbbells uh, from rep. I got them now from giant lifting. Who's Mm. also here locally in the Phoenix area. And I'm friends with the owner and and he gave me a really, really good deal. And so I reloaded on those five to 50 and five pound increments and then 10 pound jumps thereafter. Thank you, micro gains for filling in the the five pound gaps there. What else have I bought? I, I, I think I've a lot of cable attachments, some steadfast Mm. lifting stuff and Anything else? I think in terms of building, so what have I built? I built a brand new 16 pair or 16 dumbbell pair holder dumbbell rack, three tier dumbbell Mm -hmm. rack. So I built that. Um, And then I built, you can not really, I don't know if you'll see them on the final edit, but I've got like the rack mounted storage over here. And then I built in the kettlebell shelf and the Dump, uh, the bumper plate storage down below, some yep. other shelves over there. So mostly storage in terms of building, which is, I think, the most practical use of like yeah. DIY in the home gym is for, for storage. Because for sure. yeah, this stuff's expensive. It is, and it's really like beginner level stuff. It doesn't yeah. take a whole lot of investment and tools in order to, to make some basic like plate bar dumbbell holders. So yeah, I always say that's one of the first things somebody should try to build. I agree. It's, uh, I mean, when you compare it price-wise, like for instance, like 
the the kettlebell shelf and the bumper plate storage and all that, I think I would have been in probably two thousand dollars if I wanted Eesh. to go like rogue to achieve yeah. the same thing. These are obviously inspired by some rogue designs and, and others, um, but I'm probably in a couple hundred dollars in, in right. lumber, you know. Yeah. And I had a blast building it. You know, I I love that part. The creative yeah. part is is the most fun. And when it comes together and it goes up and people start spying on social media and say, oh, that's amazing, I wanna do that, kind of, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, cool, I, I, I built something cool, I'm proud of that. Yeah, I recently, uh, as you know, built your little uh, triangle plate holders uh, yeah. on my rack. I love them, dude. Like, it's, it's such an easy project. It's so simple and it just, does such a good job at making things just slightly more convenient. Like yeah. my plates moved uh, two feet from where they are. They were, they were on the wall and now they're on the rack. But like when I've got a barbell right in my rack and I'm benching, it's so much easier to like just grab up and, you know, grab a two and a half, a 10 or a five rather than like take a step over, grab it from the wall. So it's like yeah. little things like that just make such a difference. They're delightful, you know, like mm-hmm. adds a little bit of delight to the grind of the home gym life. But yeah, I was really, I thought I was really excited to see that you built that. Uh, and so cool to hear that you're finding it to add, uh, some value to your, to your home gym. It's, it's right. funny, those little things. Like I set up the rack in a new configuration with like the bat wings out the sides. And, and that's mm-hmm. where I have all my plates now. Yeah. And, and my, my change plate holder is not in use at the moment because I've oh. got these rack mounted ones. Sure. Yeah. Um, but the convenience of the bat wings where I, I like pull my plate off, turn, yeah. there's your bar. And it right. was like without moving my feet. Uh, it's little things like that that are, are really fun. Yeah. Right. And I would be remiss if I didn't just say for anybody who likes those but doesn't want to build them doesn't have the tools or time check out stray dog yeah. they've got the the three prong plate holder thing it's, it's good quality and everything yeah. yeah yeah there we yeah, go yeah 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 i mean they they inspired the original build right like right. again yeah. one of those things where i think theirs goes for a little over a hundred dollars and then you got shipping on top of that and i in as you highlighted in your in your video i had that in scrap you know, so it took right. me 30 minutes to throw that together and I saved a yeah. hundred plus dollars. Same, same yeah. here. I built, I built two of them out of scrap Yeah. and one I did because somebody was like, Oh, you gotta have $2,000 worth of tools. And I was like, Oh yeah, buddy, I'll show you how to do it with a jigsaw. Don't cut dowels with a jigsaw. That sucked. That, that looked kind of sketch, dude. That was super <laughs> sketch. And I cut out the really sketchy parts so people didn't call me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty sketchy. I would yeah. not recommend it. But, I mean, you can do that with, like, you know, whatever. A regular regular old saw and a, I don't know. I don't even know what the names of these these simple tools. I only use manly tools. <laughs> power, power tools. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. So, uh, so what are your plans for 23, dude? What do you got going on? Uh, I've got some plans. I'm gonna pause us for here just for a quick second and okay. just give you a quick video check-in. I'm not sure if yeah. you know that you've got like something in your, is that your, if you look at your, look at your video, you've got like, what are these bars over the corners? It's kind of like cropping you down. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, yes, it is. This there you is go. Yeah, it's okay. a microphone. Oh, okay. okay. There you go. Good call. That's I'm not actually using that microphone for this. So Yeah. Good it's call. A, I didn't even see that. It's, it's a, like on a boom and okay. it's just slowly going like so yeah. it's just coming Good down. Call. This is nice right. like Mike in the house. When you're ready to go, <laughs> I'll re ask that question. Okay. All right. We're back. Okay. So what are your plans for 23? What do you got going on? What do you want to do? Do you have any goals or whatever? Like what's happening? Yeah. So I think from a, from a, from a training or lifting perspective, you know, just continue to press into lifting, getting stronger. Now that we're in Arizona, it's, it's a very fit like state or city, oh, you know, yeah. the sun's out all of the time. People are at the pools often. The weather's good here a lot of the, of the year. In mm-hmm. Washington, you know, you only had to worry about that a couple months out of the year. Sure. So uh, yeah. before we moved, I was kind of on a, on a cutting journey and had lost a, a, a pretty good amount of weight, put a few back on during the move, but I'll be focusing mm-hmm. on trying to get lean and see if I can see some abs in my 40s. Uh, so that'll be a goal for, for 23. That's ambitious, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, um, nice. And then, uh, 
you know, I think I really want to continue to press into this, the content creation. I, mm-hmm. I really enjoy all of it from the building, the video editing, podcast, the community. Um, yeah. It's something that brings me a ton of joy. And so historically, it's just been on the fly. You know, when I'm in the gym, you know, a one hour training session turns into a two and a half hour training session because I start I have an idea for a video or something. Right. And yeah. Now it's going to be about, okay, I'm going to have office hours, right? So it's mm-hmm. having a schedule where I'm, I'm creating content uh, in a little bit of bulk, you know, kind of creating it in advance so that I'm mm-hmm. not scurrying, trying to post stuff here and there. Um, right. I have some product ideas that nice. I've been kind of hiding. You know, it's, it's hard. You probably know this. You build something, you have an idea and you want to show it off, but I've come to learn, as you know firsthand, that Mm -hmm. if you share an idea, it only takes one person to see it and and grab that idea from you and and bring it to market. So I've been keeping a couple of things up my sleeve and it'll probably be reaching out to you for a little bit of guidance and some others in the space. Like I know Darko's had a lot of success. Uh, Shout out to Darko. with, you know, with his shorty bar and the anchor. And so see if I can give it a go, right? Like you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. So right. got yeah. a couple of those in mind. Um, I think that's a, that's about it. You know, explore Arizona. You know, we we want to see what yeah. we like. We're, we're currently renting a house. So I'm going to have oh. to do all of this Damn, again. Bro. Uh, but, um, Unless the homeowners want to sell you the house at some point, (laughs) that would be like the only workaround. But damn, dude, that's a lot lot. of work. It's a lot. So in terms of trying to bring a product to market, I I do have a lot of insights with Mm -hmm. that. So I'd be happy to help you. But I also think that 2023 is going to be a year where companies are looking at the community and trying to work with the community, seeing some of the success stories that that some companies are having with it. I think other companies are going to start looking for it. So in terms of creative people that are within the the home gym community, I think that there's going to be more opportunities for sharing product ideas, product development, maybe, you know, getting feedback on prototypes, um, just a lot more sort of back and forth because we are the target audience. We are the ones with all the experience. We are the ones who are going to be buying these things once they're sold. So like getting our opinion on them is a pretty good idea from like, you know, a, a product design and development standpoint. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's really exciting. I think for me, when I saw, you know, Matt Pendergraph get that Rogue, the Manta Ray bench, mm-hmm. right? I think that that was a huge breakthrough uh, in the community to have Rogue, who's at the top, right? Who mm-hmm. doesn't really need to seek feedback from anybody. They can just keep on Rogan on and, and do yeah. their thing. So to see him reach out to Matt and I love Matt, but he's not some 60,000 follower Instagram account, right? He's an amazing content creator and he does amazing work with what he does. So, so to see them trusting him with mm-hmm. that opportunity is incredibly encouraging. And right. I think like what, to your point, that's, it's just the beginning and, and that's very, very cool and encouraging to hear you say, cause you have much more of a uh, insider's perspective to say that you, you know, it sounds like you probably already know about a couple of things going on behind the scenes or have heard firsthand from some of these uh, manufacturers and suppliers that this is kind of what they want to start doing. Not necessarily, but oh. what I can say is that so my experience with uh, conversations that I've had with companies and I've had oh. conversations with like a lot of different companies that I wouldn't have thought that we would be having these conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's been really cool and really illuminating. And the fact that like, you know, I had an email chain with Ryan from rep, like, really? uh, Yeah. That's awesome. Going back and forth. And like, ultimately you were not working together on that perspective project. But the fact that like he took the time to email me and that we sent emails back and forth was like, whoa, that's crazy. And like, um, I've had multiple phone conversations with the product designer at PRX and we did like a zoom chat where we discussed working together and, you know, I can't get into details about that, but the fact, I mean, you know, just like the larger picture is these are big companies that similar to rogue, 
They don't need to come to us for feedback. They can just keep doing what they've been doing and they're doing great. But the fact that they are willing to take the time to reach out and talk to us is pretty exciting. So I think that it bodes well for the future. And, you know, things like Home Gym Con coming up where we can actually have face-to-face conversations with the people that are developing these products, the people who are running these companies. I think that it it just, like, it makes it feel much more like a community and a Mm. symbiotic relationship rather than just, like, consumer and companies selling things to the consumer, you know, that's very, like, divided. Let's talk about Home Gypcon. Can we talk about Home Gypcon? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, it's coming up. I mean, we're just a mm-hmm. few months away. Uh, I just booked my hotel room at the French Lick nice. Resort. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I was on the website, and I'm looking... This, really, the first time I'm really looking at the pictures of the, the venue. Mm-hmm. And I booked the room, <clears throat> and the, the plan at the time was I was going to go solo. You know, my wife, and it was just going to be too much to try and bring the wife and, and my daughter flights from, yeah. from a flights perspective. Right. But once I started seeing the resort, I thought... Oh man, I'll never hear the end of it if my wife discovers mm-hmm. where I'm at for a weekend and she didn't get to come. Um, Dude, me too, man. Like I would think my wife would be like, "No way, I don't want to be anywhere near all those gym nerds or whatever." But she's like, "Dude, that resort looks sick." Yeah. Like she just wants to go and do spa stuff the whole time. They can hang out. Is, is she coming? Yeah. Is your wife coming? I think she is. I mean, it depends on her work schedule, sure, but uh, sure. yeah, she she is interested in going. Okay. Yeah. My wife is now too. I told her, I was like, you don't, we don't even have to get you tickets to the the convention. Like you can right. just, she's like, she, she cut me off. She's like, I'll just hang out in the spa all day. And I right. said, okay, maybe you can join us for a dinner or two, you know, if you want, yeah. but for sure, you yeah. know, then I've checked that box. I don't think we've gone on like a, a, a celebrated our anniversary appropriately. I mean, since we mm-hmm. had our daughter. So I told her, um, Let's do this. And one of, you know, to kind of circle back to the move, the us relocating, you know, we we're both originally from Southern California, although we met up in the Seattle area and that's where mm-hmm. we've been the last 10 or 12 years, but we were always very far from the majority of our family. So being here in Arizona puts us a five or six hour drive away from family. That's nice. So yeah. I said, Hey, can your mom maybe come out for the weekend and just stay with our daughter, and then we can go to Indianapolis and mm-hmm. <laughs> do that two hour drive. I'm like, I'd love somebody to do the two hour drive from the airport to the convention with me. That's right. That's a track. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. And I mean, so we've got some really great uh, manufacturers coming, it sounds like. And mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, Jake's been pretty hush hush about how many people have signed up, but I'm getting, you know, really excited. There's more and more people I'm seeing sign up from both within the community um, and from a manufacturer perspective. I mean, let alone just getting to meet you in person, have a beer, meet Jake it's in person awesome. and, and the rest of the community. Yeah. So many guys that, you know, yeah. we probably both had lengthy conversations with, you know, these are some of your kind of your closest friends because you're having conversations with them every day, but you've never actually met them in person. It's kind of like right. the old like online gaming days, you know, but for yeah. for us in our forties now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited. Um, I'm planning on going and bringing all the products that I have helped to develop okay. by that point, like whatever's <clears throat> whatever's out. Um, I also just reached out to Jim Penn. Like they definitely can't fly from the UK right. to go, right. but like I was like, I'll bring all my Jim Penn stuff. If you guys want to send me anything else, like I think it's going to be awesome not only to be a spectator and like put my hands on all this equipment that I've never experienced before, yeah. but also to be somebody that's helping to provide all of this stuff that other people have seen, but maybe haven't used or touched or anything like that before. It's going to be really cool. Yeah. I'm going to have my adapters there so people can actually like yes. try them out yes. for themselves and, you know, see if they like it, see if it's worth it. The, the whole idea of, you know, we normally shop for this stuff online and we see videos of people reviewing it, but you know, you never get that tactile experience right. of like feeling the knurling in your hands until the bar arrives and you've already made that choice. Yeah. Like this, this is going to fix all that. And I think it's really awesome. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I and mean, you kind of answered my question, but one of the questions I was going to ask you is, were you going, were you attending as a, as a spectator or as more of a manufacturer? And it sounds like the answer is kind of a little bit of both. So I guess basically, yeah, I'm sort of like in the middle of spectator and manufacturer. Like I'm 
I'm not an official company or anything. Mm -hmm. I am happy to provide all the products and do demonstrations for the things that I've helped to help develop and, you know, help represent Jim Pin because they're not going to be able to be there. I would like to be, have some sort of like DIY booth. Like, did you ever go to Home Depot with your kids where they're like, you can get these yeah. little sets yeah, and yeah. put them together in Home Depot? Absolutely. Like I was thinking something like that would That's be great. cool. great, yeah. That like, you know, people can take home, like even if it's just the triangle shaped plate holder, like, you know, take that home to your gym. You put it together here, it's simple, no saws or anything. Like everything's gonna have to be pre-cut. Right, right. But like, I think that that would be a fun experience. So it's really a matter of like, I've got to get in and plan it. If I want to do anything right. like that, nobody's gonna figure it out for me. I yeah. have to do the work. Yeah. But yeah, I think that there's a lot of potential to, to make it really fun and interactive. Yeah, well, I mean, so to, to that, on that, same kind of note, I was wondering myself, right? Like, even if my, my wife does come, even though the original plan was for me to go by myself, I thought, you know, I'll, I'll do the loop of the convention and I'll see everything I want to see and try the things I want to try, but I'll still have plenty of time on my hands. I'm going to want to kind of like help, right? Like I want to mm -hmm. just jump in and be, you know, I kind of see myself as being part of team garage gym experiment. So right, I, I, yeah. I was wondering like, where, where do I fit in? Is there going to, is there going to be help needed? And I thought about that. I'm like, are we going to have like a little DIY segment or an, uh, an actual in-person like um, round table podcast would be really, really yeah. cool to have all yeah. of us sitting on a couch together would be really, really right. cool. Um, yeah. So just kind of wondering like, what is that going to look like? How am I going to fill my time? you know, for a day and a half at this convention. Funny story. I was talking about giant lifting their local here in Phoenix. When I was <clears throat> picking up my dumbbells there, they're only open a couple of days a week for warehouse pickups. Right. So I went on a Saturday, which is their busiest day for warehouse pickups. And, mm -hmm. you know, as being a friend of the owners, I wasn't trying to just be like, just cut in and be like, Hey, let me get myself and get out of here. He was yeah. there by himself and he was on like, Hey man, just let me jump in. Let me help. You know, let me, he's like, Oh, nice. um, okay. Okay. Can you, can you help that guy load up his, his five to a hundred set of dumbbells? So nice. I just dove in and started loading, you know, helping this guy load up and he starts asking me a bunch of questions and had, you know, had tons of questions cause he was questions cause he was just starting his home oh. gym build out. Right. Yeah. And as you yeah. know, we can talk about this stuff forever, forever. but in the yeah. process of loading up his car, I accidentally loaded up my pair of 20 pound dumbbells as well that I was there to pick up. Oh, no. So as, yeah. as you know, I sent this guy away and then it finally became my turn to start loading up my car and I'm like, okay, I've got my five to a hundred, but I'm missing twenties. And then oh, no. I guess that guy called up later and said, Hey, I've got an extra pair of twenties in the car. I don't know how they got here. Well, they were mine. I, don't know how nice. to pr proper, properly uh, take inventory and load. But right. um, yeah. anyway, to that end, you know, I'm looking for opportunities to get involved wherever that might be. Yeah, yeah. it's going to well, be fun. I feel like there's going to be plenty of help needed. And it's also because it's the first year mm -hmm. we don't really know. Nobody really knows what to expect. Right. Like I've been I've been to the Arnold and last summer I took my kid to like the Comic-Con convention. In San Diego? Um, uh, no, we we had one in Indianapolis. Okay. But that's sort of where the idea of Home Gym Con came from, mm -hmm. is like, we didn't go together, but I met up with Jake and Adam at the Arnold. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Comic-Con and PopCon in the summer. And then like, I texted Jake like, dude, I just went to these things and like, we went to the Arnold. Do you think we could do something like this for like the home gym community? Yeah. And his text back was like, I don't think we could ever do it. It would take years to plan. And I was like, ah, oh, well, okay. I mean, it was an idea. It was worth like throwing it out there. And then I kind of forgot about it. And then like a month later, he's like, dude, I've been getting so pumped up about this home gym con thing, man. Like <laughs> I know this place. And it was like, whoa, like it's actually happening. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. Anyway, long story short, I feel like uh, we don't really know what's gonna happen. It could be totally crazy. It could be totally chill. But knowing that like we have people around that are gonna be available to help yeah. and interested in helping, I think is going to be very helpful. The biggest, I think that one of the biggest things is like getting all the equipment in and out of there. Mm. Um, because we're planning on bringing like, you know, companies are going to be sending stuff there. Companies are going to be sending stuff here. We're going to have to be transporting stuff. There are going to be things that we want to have at home gym con that 
you know, the companies aren't providing, so we're going to have to take our own equipment. So there's going to be a lot of heavy lifting and dissembling and Perfect. reassembling. And yeah. Um, so yeah, lots of, lots of that. If you're able and willing to help, hell yeah, bro. Perfect. That'll be nice. Well, you know, I didn't, I wasn't sure. So when I was looking at flights, you know, being that I'm coming from Arizona, flying in on Friday doesn't make sense. Cause I'll get there. I'd arrive at the resort after that Friday night, uh, had started. Cause I bought the, whatever the VIP package or whatever. So mm-hmm. I'm like thinking I'll probably fly in on Thursday and mm-hmm. um, and stay one extra night. So I'll be there a day ahead. So and I don't know sweet. what time I imagine you guys are kind of probably going to be there on Thursday or Jake. And then we'll probably be setting up on Thursday. I used to probably just reach out to him directly. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the timeline is. But yeah, yeah so that's good to know. Um, yeah, there's still like a lot of planning and figuring out it kind of seems do. like it i had to reach out to jake uh, i'm like hey do we have a room block i kind of want to get this sorted he said and he just sent me yeah. a link he's like yeah 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 i gotta get on top of that <laughs> so right yeah, yeah. thank you <laughs> again yeah it's like because it's the first time it's it's like a lot of a lot of things that have to come together mm-hmm. and a lot of people who aren't or are not even a lot of people a, a couple dudes that aren't really experienced in this just trying to like wing it and figure it all out right. so yeah it is it's going to be a, a fun learning experience for everyone, but I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And then, you know, a successful first year means that there's going to be a second year of course. and, you know, maybe other locations and stuff. So I think there's a lot of potential for it to expand after this as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, for me, that was the, the two biggest motivators for me making the investment to go. Cause it's, it's a lift, right. For me to get mm-hmm. there and make the drive right. and, you know, all that kind of stuff um, were number one, you know, I, the opportunity to meet you guys in person, right? Like we've been building these relationships and getting to know each other over this time. Why would I pass up that opportunity to go have all of you guys in one central location and be able to hang out with you guys? So that was that kind of FOMO, but then because it's the first one, right? Like I want to be a part of helping it potentially be successful and Mm -hmm. whether it's chaos or if it's chill, like I want to be a part of that. You know, I want to, I want to have that story to tell, you know, kind of having the vision to say like home gym con be actually becomes a thing, an annual thing, uh, in different locations. Maybe I want to be a part of the first one. So it was those two reasons was just, you know, I'm going, I'm, I'm just, you know, we're going to YOLO this and figure out the finances later. Um, right. yeah. Yeah. Well, Mike, I cannot wait to meet up with you, whether we pick you up in Indianapolis and you help us load and we all caravan down there together, yes. or if we just meet you down there, either way, I'm so stoked to like get together, get to chat in person, have a beer or 10 and just have a good time at French Lick. <laughs> Me too, man. It's, it is, it is something that I've been looking forward to. It's kind of, I should have included that in my what's big for 2023 home gym con is at the top of that list right. um, yeah. and getting to meet Everybody, if you guys are listening and you guys are going to be there, I cannot wait to meet you guys and hang out. Seriously, have a beer or 10, as Kyle put it. Right. Like it's going to be a blast. Yeah. Okay. Well, that about wraps it up. Mike, would you like to give your plug for the listener at home? Sure, sure. You guys can find me on Instagram at nice like Mike underscore underscore. Uh, I'm also on YouTube uh, under nice like Mike, no underscores, and TikTok, nice like Mike. My primary uh, platform currently is still is Instagram, but that's where you guys can find me um, and, and, and check in and say, say what's up. I'm, I'm very responsive. All right, Mike. Well, thanks for joining me. I'm sure we'll chat again very soon. I'll uh, we'll talk to you later, man. All right, buddy. See you later.